As far as the old amp probe, I was actually able to go through and repair this meter. Basically Q7, which is a H1A transistor, it failed short. This is how come the diode continuity ohms and capacitance checker didn't work. I then went through and did a complete alignment on it. Uh, this meter works actually very well now. I don't really have any plans for the meter. This uh, unit T here, it also failed. The D46, uh, which is a D7000 volt diode, it shorted. And that's in series with these traces, which basically vaporized. Um, R44 and R45 is a voltage divider. Those had both opened up. I've since uh, changed the body style for this to go to a little bit larger size fuse for the current. It's also got a, a much better fuse in there now. And I also realigned this meter. Uh, so this meter actually works uh, quite well now. I have no plans for using this meter for anything. I've marked all these meters as test only. So if you end up with one of these for me in a garage sale or something, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know where it's been. The last time I modified the transient generator, I had increased its ability to run up to about 7,000 volts. That's about it for this box. The problem is, is it's just uh, too dense inside of the box. I don't feel comfortable with the spacing that I have today. I've already got quite a bit of Teflon inside of this thing to keep it from internally breaking down. Last time I ran it, we had the Fluke 101 and the Amp Probe running at about 5.8 kilovolts. And see again, I've got the uh, 6013 Tech Probe attached. I'm at 5 microseconds per division here and 2,000 volts per division vertically and you can see I'm running at about uh, 6.5 kilovolts right now so we've added about uh, 700 volts beyond what uh, we had tested the last two meters at and you can see here the decay is still roughly the same at about 40 microseconds so my plan here is to uh, run the 101 again and just see if it can withstand this uh, higher peak voltage so again, we're going to start testing the Fluke 101 here. This is going to be 6,500 volts using a 2 ohm source impedance and a 40 microsecond decay. Alright, I've made some modifications to the transient generator. Camera cut out on the last video, but in a nutshell, the meter ended up passing that test. It's a 12 kV. It's a little short on the fall time. It's still a 2 ohm source impedance. You can see there's a second box here that's been added. This second box now contains uh, the entire capacitor bank and one of the things I'd like to mention here is I've played around uh, with different light bulbs over the course of this experiment and uh, this is a 110 volt uh, Vandy light bulb and I've never been able to get this bulb to light. Uh, last night I uh, applied the transient to this thing and uh, yeah definitely lit this thing up and damaged it on one hit so yeah, this is quite a bit more energy than what we had been playing with, but just to give you an idea here, we'll fire up our trusty spark plug. Maybe get the fluke out of here. <laughs> Show you, yeah, the generator's working. A little hard to tell here. But the, uh, the gap on this plug is closed way down. And that's because I was testing at quite a bit lower voltages. You can't even fit a, uh, a razor blade through this. <laughs> that's how tight that gap is. That right there. So I'm just going to open this thing up a little bit. It's uh, fairly huge now, 12,000 volts, should clear that gap. Oh yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's give the meter a try here. There we go, 12,000 volts. Again, no damage to the Fluke 101 on the last run. So I've made another change here to the box. Again, looking at the LaCroix. 
can see we're now 50 microseconds per division 2000 volts per division so we're now at about uh, 13 kilovolts and roughly 100 microsecond one of the EEV blog members had pointed out that the IEC standards are all in full width half height so they measure the uh, peak shape from the 50 percent so I've gone ahead and added that so we're looking at the uh, width here in full width half height so again you're looking at uh, 50 microsecond per division and you can see here we're roughly at uh, 100 microsecond full width half height now so this is about double what the IEC standard calls for and we're about a kilovolt higher than what the IEC standard calls for give you an idea of the amount of energy this thing will put out this is a 470 ohm carbon comp resistor it used to look like this this is what the generator will do to it and yeah, this is why uh, it's good to test this stuff inside of the plastic box there's definitely a little bit of energy here you can see here the ends there's an end cap there there's an end cap over here <laughs> yeah so don't play with this stuff at home and let you know what you're doing So again, I've got a little bit of bias on the meter. Okay, here we go. I believe the meter is still functioning. Again, this is uh, 13,000 volts, a little over 13,000 with a full width half height of 100 microseconds, uh, 2 ohm source impedance. The uh, problem now is our connectors even at the ends of the box. These aren't rated for this kind of voltage. I don't like our uh, non-protected uh, banana jacks here. And this box would definitely need some rework to go any higher than this. And I think to, uh, to build something that's going to do this job and uh, take this meter out is going to be a fair amount of money. So. So I can't really see uh, taking that job on for just for entertainment. <laughs> I think I'd rather spend the money on a new uh, 
a new fluke meter. <laughs> well, she's got two more pulses to go. And we'll functional test it. This meter is pretty unbelievable. I can't believe that it's uh, survived all these tests. <laughs> I'd almost like to uh, take some other brands and run them against uh, what this little meter survived at. I mean, for 50 bucks, it's like I never would have thought it would have gone through all these tests. One more hit, and we're done. <laughs> and there you have it. Okay. We'll let this thing bleed down for a bit, and then we'll go ahead and... Uh, take it apart and functional test the meter. Okay, I finished testing the Fluke 101. Uh, this thing passes with flying colors. Again, the last test was performed at a little over 13,000 volts with a full width half height of 100 microseconds using a 2 ohm source impedance. And this meter didn't even flutter. I've been using this Tektronix P6013A. This is my only high voltage probe I've got that'll run up this high. And you can see here it's got a max peak pulse voltage of 12 kV. We've exceeded that by at least a thousand volts. Uh, so we are definitely at the outside range of what this probe is even rated to handle. So I probably won't do any more testing. Uh, this is the limit of really what I can do with this box. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to build another generator. So I don't know where it fails at, but we do know it's something over uh, 13,000 volts at uh, 100 microseconds. I would say that for the new guy who's looking for a cheap meter, this thing is very robust. I think chances of you uh, damaging it are pretty low. And again, it, if you're just using it in the lab, the backlight probably isn't that big of a deal. Um, the only reason I don't like the beepers being slow is if, I, if I'm testing like a PLCC or something, I'm sliding the lead, the test lead across the IC chips. It's not definitely not good enough for that. But um, yeah, overall, I like the meter. Again, I don't have a lot of bad things to say about it. The switch feels real good on it. It's got enough functions. It doesn't have current sense, but I'll typically use a meter like this with a shunt anyway. There you go, Fluke. King of all the meters I tested, for sure. That's a lot of brands. It'd be interesting to see if any of the other manufacturers would be willing to step out and say, yeah, we think we can beat this little $50 meter with our high-end ones. I've contacted a few manufacturers and it's interesting some manufacturers claim that the meters do not have to be functional after the surge testing and other ones feel that they do have to be. I've read the 6110 standards myself. I can see how you get different answers. If you're talking with a manufacturer and they claim that they don't have to be functional after that test, it's a pretty good chance that uh, even this little Fluke 101 is probably going to outperform what it is that they offer for a product. So I think that's it for my testing. You know, unless I get another meter and decide to run it on this generator, you can bet I'm not going to dial down the generator for it. Uh, if this meter can live through it, I'm expecting pretty much any meter I look at forward would have to survive the testing the way this generator is set right now.